over the last week or so, we've certainly seen an uptick in the number of patients who are confirmed positive in-house and on vents. And it's the patients that are confirmed positive on vents that are the ones that are the hardest to deal with in the health system and that we've been spending the most time working through. Probably the biggest challenge with these patients as they start to roll in, the amount of time that they are critically ill, though that is probably the biggest change from our typical patient flow with these folks. Uh, you know, they're not on a ventilator for, you know, three, four days. They're on a ventilator for 12 to 18 days. And what that does from a resource allocation, uh, staffing, and just logistics in general really is a, a difficult proposition that we've been working through, uh, certainly sharing best practice across the networks to make sure that we're doing the right thing. But that's probably been our biggest challenge to date. The daily operations of what the pharmacy is uh, every day really have kind of gone out the window. But what we are doing is leveraging the skill sets of those that we have in-house to be successful. So what I mean by that is the patients who are COVID positive in-house have a lot of unique uh, medical nuances to their cases. And what we're doing is leveraging our clinical specialists who are typically doing critical care, peds, uh, oncology, uh, cardiology to, to really take that and put that on the side and put on really a COVID hat right now. And what they're doing every day is they're going through our database, looking at all the patients who are confirmed COVID positives and doing things to make the operational flow more successful. So standardizing times of medication administration to limit access to the rooms for nurses to mitigate some of that risk, uh, to go ahead and streamline antibiotic therapy much like they would on any other day but doing it now specifically dialed into those patients. Um, this morning, when we went through the list, there's about 140 patients. So we have our eight clinical specialists and that's their whole day. They're not doing rounds, they're not doing other pieces. Uh, those parts of their day are just shrunk uh, to a very small size. And they're mostly focusing on doing COVID prep. Uh, other areas of the pharmacy, some items that we're working on are, you know, technicians on how they can go ahead and do their daily flows to limit their exposure to those units, how pharmacists can be successful in being centralized in the pharmacy versus being decentralized. Those have been our biggest operational changes and challenges to date with the COVID situation. COVID positive patients are being uh, placed in like-minded areas. And we started with four units in house, we're up to six and certainly can expand therein. But what that means from a cabinet perspective is changing the content of that particular machine to reflect what's needed for those COVID patients. It's really a constant process. So if you were to ask me today what our treatment algorithm is, I would give you a different answer than what we thought it was gonna be three weeks ago. You know, the ability to be fluid and adjust and change supply of medications therein is something that we've, uh, I'd say, gotten pretty adept with uh, in a short period of time because we had to. From a technician perspective, you know, typically uh, inside of your automated dispensing cabinets, we would try to have three to four days supply for patients so we would have the meds available out there. Well, that is now a much larger total. You know, we're aiming for closer to a week's worth of meds when the real estate allows it for those floors so we can limit the amount of trips out there. Uh, what the pharmacists are doing now really are, is a lot more operational, triaging, getting medications to places, uh, you know, versus their clinical mindset of going through pharmacokinetics, renal, renal dosing, IV to PO. They're still doing those, but the main focus every day is just logistics, the right drug to the right patient as fast as we can. That's really what our goal is right now. We've put together an algorithm that we think is the best treatment strategy for those patients. We have a, an adequate supply of those medications because we've planned, we've used our back channels, uh, you know, primary, secondary wholesalers, and we've stockpiled within reason, not hoarding, but enough to make sure that we can handle our projected surges for those. It's the medications that you would typically need for vented and critically ill patients. Those are the ones that are the biggest struggle right now, not necessarily the COVID uh, treatment strategy. So hydroxychloroquine, uh, you've heard azithromycin originally, which is no longer in favor. You know, some people have mentioned ivermectin, uh, a lot of different pieces uh, that, you know, may or may not help. Those are fine uh, from what we've been able to do so far. It's your typical sedatives, your paralytics that you'll find for innovated patients, those are the ones that, you know, are, are a little bit of a struggle. We keep a, a very close eye on that. We have daily pharmacy meetings internally at the hospital at 930 to go over critical medications. And we have a system pharmacy call every day at 1130. 
to have that same information relayed across so we could share resources amongst the sites within the network. I will share that the thing that I think we've done a very good job with is communicating. The worst thing, or you know, the phrase I like to use is the torpedo that'll sink the ship is if there's misinformation out there and you're not communicating with your staff. So constant, not some here and there, not an email on Wednesdays, every day, constant communication with the staff. Because I can't tell you how many policy changes and revisions we've had with this, and that's to be expected, but you have to keep people abreast of those changes. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think Reading, Tower, the pharmacy here has done an excellent job with, just keeping our staff informed. And that really has been the most successful piece to this. Uh, we tee up every week with our staff, you know, what we're looking for, uh, you know, to be happening over the week. Uh, we had a conference call with all the pharmacies in the network prior to this event really taking off saying, this is coming, this is what we need to do. And that has been, I'd say, the saving grace throughout this uh, entire pandemic, the ability for our staff to effectively communicate. You know, one thing I, I would like to say is during, you know, this event, something that we have seen is the sharing of what typically is proprietary information or information that one health system has and another doesn't, that really has gone out the window. And we've been able to share successfully uh, with local hospitals, uh, places within our GPO, uh, you know, our, our similar facilities within the network have been incredibly open with information that has worked for them. So please, I would you know, implore anybody to learn from the lessons that you know, our brother and sister hospitals in New York have already gone through and take that information and internalize it to you. Because it's not a question of if, but when your surge will come. And the best thing you can do to be ready for that surge is to learn from others. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. A lot of the items that you're gonna go through, people already have. So iron out your supply chains, look through staffing contingencies, and constantly communicate your staff with your staff. Those are the best things that you can do.